How big of a tank do you need? This question gets asked all the time, and I'm going to do another video on it because I kind of came up with another way of making a tank, and I just, I, I love hearing people of why I need this gigantic 275-gallon tank, 325-gallon tank, 500-gallon tank, 1,000-gallon tank. Now, I understand that in some situations, you will need a humongous tank. So I've been in business for since 2011 is when I first started. 2011. And you know how many times I hauled water or I needed water hauled? Twice. The first time, I blew my van up because I pulled 500 gallons of water, which was way too heavy for that F-150 van, E-150 van, and that straight six motor. It blew the transmission straight out of it. Back to my story. The mailman just came. Back to my story of, of this big giant tank of 250 gallons of water, 300 gallons of water to wash this house. And then by the end of it, I blew my transmission out of my, uh, my Ford van. So guess what? Now I got to go buy either a $3,000 transmission or go buy a, um, oh, and on that job, I made a whopping $400. So $400 for a $3,000 transmission. I ended up buying just another truck and just going with another truck and dealing with um, just buying that truck. So going down the tank route, how big of a buffer tank do I need for a eight gallon a minute is the question that I got asked. And I'm gonna even hit the five gallon a minute and I'm gonna hit the zero gallon a minute pumps. How big of a tank do I need for my truck? Okay, so I get that you can buy a 275 gallon tote for $25, $35, $50 cheap. You're gonna buy any other size tank Unless it's a 55-gallon drum, and that's actually what I did here because I wanted to show you that you can use 55-gallon drums, and that's going to be part of my thing here. We can use a 55-gallon drum for a buffer tank, and I, I haven't done one yet, but I'm going to show you how to actually do it and put a hole in the bottom of the tank. There's a fitting we can put into it, slide it in it, and we can suck out of the bottom of a 55-gallon tank. So yes, I could use a 55 gallon tank and I would use it even for an eight gallon a minute. And I'll show you the reason why here shortly. So I love, I love the big people that are like, you gotta use, you got to use these giant, giant tanks, these gigantic tanks. And I say, why? Well, what if I get to a place that don't have good water. Okay, I give you that. My next question to them is, do you carry water from job to job? Well, no, I don't do that. Okay, so you're gonna bring this big giant tank with no water because most of these people that have these little bitty trailers aren't rated for carrying water that much water. So. That is my whole point of these big buffer tanks. What's the purpose of it? Why do I need 300 gallons of water? The other time that we had to haul water was a time that we were at the airport, the Cincinnati airport. It was for DHL and they had these big white beams. So I brought, I had my old 500 gallon tank, put it on my trailer, filled it up at the house and we worked for you know a couple, about an hour. And the next thing you know, we're out of water. So guess what? We had to haul water anyway, and we didn't even haul water by ourselves. We actually paid a company to bring us water with a water tank because it was cheaper to do that than trying to move that 500 gallons on a truck and trailer. So my point of being on buffer tanks are we don't need gigantic buffer tanks. Now, I get that they're cheap, and I understand that 100%. I also get that they can be used to put signage on. And I understand for marketing and that kind of thing. I understand that 100%. But there's places on that trailer that I can put a sign on other than this gigantic water tank. So 
when people when I see people with these gigantic water tanks, I usually laugh at first. So, well, what what and then the, the question was also what's the minimum? So on a minimum, so here's the reason why on a 275 gallon water tank, it's roughly about four foot by four foot square is roughly about how the big, it might be a little bit 40 by 48 and it's about four foot tall. So just for it to fill up um, this much is 10 gallons. It's 20 gallons just to fill up this much. Because you got to fill up a whole thing of four foot wide by four foot in this much. So it takes a whole lot of water to just get started to pressure wash. If I'm in a little, like the one tanks on my eight gallons of truck, I use 65 gallon tanks. So if I can fill up this much water on a 65 gallon tank, it's only about five gallons. On my 35 gallon, it's only about five gallons, four or five gallons. So it doesn't take me a lot of water before I can start pressure washing again. If you have this ginormous tank and not much water bought pressure, it will take you forever because you have to wait for it to fill up this much, which is 20 gallons before you can even start pressure washing. And so I would consider using a smaller buffer tank. Now, I understand if you have the means and you have a trailer that is rated to haul 500 gallons and you have issues where, and, and here's the other thing, you know, if you're doing a lot of um, commercial work, a lot of um, cleaning long sidewalks, not a lot of water sources, then that's a reason to carry 500 gallons. I get that. And, but then again, the buddy I met in Pennsylvania is only using a five gallon a minute machine. And that way, that five gallons a minute out at 500 gallons will last longer than eight gallons a minute because you're going to use more water and you're not going to get as much done. So, with all that being said, I've kind of went on down my rabbit trail of why we don't need this giant buffer tank. We can also use a 55 gallon drum barrel. And you talk about cheap, you can get them for five, ten dollars free, you know, if you find them. And we can actually put a hole, drill a hole in the bottom of the tank. And I'm gonna, I'll do a video on it. I don't have the right ring for it yet. And you put this grommet in it, and you put your hose in, and put a piece of pipe in it, and that is is waterproof that it won't leak out that hose. Now, we only got to fill up a 55 gallon drum this much and we're ready to pressure wash again. You know, it won't take long because if we get up high enough, it's just going to help push the water out too because of it. So, we don't need giant water tanks to pressure wash. If you're in a rural area of Timbuktu, and I mean, we go all over, we go down into Grant County, we go down into Owen County. And there's been very few times that I've needed water. Um, the one time I did need to carry, we carried the 275 gallons because she told us we were on cistern and I'd done it before and it took me all day to do this one house because the pump was slow and it took forever. So I knew that it was going to take me forever. So that's why I filled it up. And even when I filled up my 275 gallon tank, by the time I was done, I was still waiting on water to fill up my tank because their cistern and their little pump wasn't keeping my pump um, up fast enough. So that is a time that I did bring water. And even then, it didn't hold over long enough. You know, and even if you say, well, I'll bring 100 gallons. Well, 100 gallons, that's 800 pounds. Is your trailer rated for, you know, 1,000, 2,000 pounds? If you're on a small axle, it's not rated for much. So just be careful. If you're looking for in the back of a pickup truck or you know that kind of stuff they don't have these giant tanks and there's a reason why we don't need giant tanks um, i get that the 275 totes are cheap and they are super duper cheap and and that's great but don't get carried away with these big giant tanks hey go check out my membership at pressurewashhelp.com i go over everything you need to know to grow in be successful in a pressure washing business. I go over all the equipment you need. I go over how to clean stuff, everything you need to know. And if you'd like to learn more about downstream injection, go check out my video over here and I'll see you in that next video.